How many are not under the age of 30? 20 somethings? Let me hear from the 20 somethings. Yeah. These are the dumbest people I've ever met in my life. Uh, not personally, just as a group. Do me a favor, put some cash in your pocket, grease your debit cards every $1.17 purchase. I get so tired of standing mine on Minimart. That's $1.17, here's my debit card. <laughs> you don't have a buck and a quarter? I know they're dumber than people my age. You know, when I was growing up, we didn't have any child-proof caps. You dropped a Coke bottle, it didn't bounce, it shattered. Our parents let us play with guns and knives and fireworks. You know what happened to the dumb kids? They didn't make it. These guys grew up in a world that's child-proofed and padded. All the dumb ones lived. Now they use debit cards for $1.17 purchases. You ever see what they're buying? Energy drinks. How much energy do you need in your 20s? Should be selling those at their retirement village. That's the target market right there. A couple of monsters and a Red Bull are gonna pick up that bingo game, I'm sure. <laughs> B19, that's mine. A lot of our terms don't mean anything. I don't want to sound like a broken record. You know what that means, right? People under 30 never own a record player. They don't know what that means. They don't know what that means. They don't know what that means. <laughs> you still don't. You ever watch them on their smartphones? Can't put them down. Somebody calls, somebody texts, I need a tweet. Jeez, focus. You ever take a smartphone away from a 20 something? They don't know what to do. They look like they got hit with a shovel. It's like, I should have learned how to talk to people. <laughs> the text never ends either, it's nonstop. Did you know in Seattle, I'm not making this up, there's a public service campaign going on. It's on the buses, in the newspapers, on the radio stations, telling young people, you cannot text 911, you have to call and use your voice. <laughs> I wish I was making that up. <laughs> because apparently they've had trouble with it. OMG, someone's in the house. <laughs> I am not R-O-F-L-M-A-O. <laughs> These initials for everything you're either taking. It's all initials, end of a funny sentence, LOL. You know, we used to put initials at the end of a funny sentence. We used to write H-A-H-A. -H -A. It's pronounced ha-ha, and it stood for ha-ha. Which is a much better way to say ha-ha than lol. You're not the first ones to use the initials, FYI. <laughs> I make fun of the 20-somethings of their phones, but you know what, I'm as bad as they are. They're addictive, it's instant information at the end of your hand. It's hard to leave them alone, but I do miss the black old school rotary phones. You know why and what those are good for? 20-somethings, you're missing out on this. The older people remember this, end in an argument. Yeah, remember slamming those down? Felt good to slam a phone down. You could let some aggression out. You know what, kiss mine. Bang. Felt good. Can't do that with a smartphone. He'll kiss my beep click. <laughs> he tear your pants pocket out doing that. Now those old phones, there was a bell in there. You slammed it hard enough, you could ring it. Look, I see some people nodding there, remember? You know what, kiss mine. Bing. You guys know I did this? Phones used to be on the wall. I'm not making that up. Tell you something else, people used to call us. We didn't know who it was. I'm not making that up either, am I? Remember the phone would ring? You would run to answer it. You pull your hamstring getting to the phone. Now you hear that thing ring, you go, like, whatever. And do you know why you would run? Listen to this. Do you know why you would run to the phone? Listen to this. Because if you didn't get there, there were no answered machines. Look at you looking at me like, no way. And then you didn't know, you did not know. You'd stand like, who was that? And then listen to this, you had to call all your friends, listen to this on numbers that you stored in your head. I'm not making that up either, am I? No. All the old people in here, they know the number of the house they grew up in. Am I right? Yeah. Now do you know your spouse's number? No. Phones are smart, we're not. 
some kids are having trouble telling time now. They never see the face of a clock. They don't know how to tell time. Think about the crummy fighter pilots they're gonna make. Enemy aircraft, two o'clock. <laughs> That's in an hour. <laughs> it is a pleasure to be here. I uh, know a lot of you looking at me right now and you're going, I think this guy did my taxes. <laughs> I'll do them, but you'll go to jail. <laughs> Some of you are looking at me too going, ah, oh, this guy's kind of old. I get it. I'm reminded all the time that I'm getting older. I, the other day I got mad at this old guy because he was doing something old guys do and then I got a good look at him and I went, oh man, I went to high school with that guy. <laughs> this will wreck your day, make you feel a thousand years old. You ever get on a website, you have to enter your own personal information, you have to scroll down to your birth year? <laughs> Come on, you gotta be kidding me, really? Oh. <laughs> I felt young the other day. I was in the grocery store. I was in the produce section all by myself, middle of the afternoon. Then the van from the retirement village shows up. All of a sudden, I'm the youngest guy in that store by about 30 years. I'm in the produce section. I'm the only guy fast enough to tear off those plastic bags. You know, there you go. You're welcome. Have a nice day. One for each of you. Hurry up, please. <laughs> you ever see the old folks try and snap those bags off? They get 20 or 30 on the floor. I went to the mall, the old folks at the mall. You ever seen the old folks try and get on the escalator? They're standing there trying to time that step coming out. And when do you lose that skill? Does that just happen overnight? I mean, do you just go to the mall one day and just go, whoa, that thing is moving right there. Oh. Here's a tip for all of you on the escalator. When you get to the top or the bottom, you don't know where you're going, step aside, then make a plan. How hard a concept is that for people to wrap their heads around? They get off the top, okay, which way are we gonna go? It's 400 people being force fed up your backside. Move. I'm from Seattle, marijuana's now legal. You can buy it in a cookie, so now I know how to shut up the neighbor's dog. <laughs> there you go, Sparky, you better get out of the sun. You're about to take a long nap, my friend. You're looking around and that's a good idea. <laughs> I went to Hong Kong and Singapore, worked these English speaking comedy clubs, spent several days exploring Hong Kong, but there was something different about the city. I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Finally figured it out. You know what it is? No Chinatown. <laughs> it's a stupid joke, I know that. I got here yesterday, we landed in Salt Lake City, took a Uber down here and the guy had the radio on and uh, one of your local hospitals is doing an ad for their emergency room. <laughs> is that something you shop around for? <laughs> an emergency room? Honey, I got my finger off the table, so I'm in the emergency room. Let's try that new place in Spanish for it. <laughs> Get the Sunday paper, there's a coupon in there. <laughs> if your finger's half off, it's half off. And there's some mattress, mattress firm, mattress something, not some mattress store running an ad right now telling you who can finance a mattress over 48 months. If it takes you four years to pay off a mattress, you can't afford a mattress. If it takes you four years to pay off a mattress, nothing will help you sleep better. You wanna sleep better? Get a career where you can afford a mattress. And how did the entire mattress industry decide from coast to coast, the only way we can move this product is get a tattooed meth head out on the sidewalk with a sign and spin that thing around a few times. <laughs> a mattress is not an impulse buy. You have never been driving home from work and went, I gotta get a mattress on that. <laughs> you know what, every time I see that guy on the sidewalk, you know I'm thinking, that's the owner's nephew. He told his sister, I'll give him a job, but he's not coming in the store. How about this piece of advertising? Ever drive by a business, there's a big banner hanging out front that says, under new management. Has that ever worked and brought in a customer? It's always on a mini-mart or an old motel. That's where you see that thing. Hey, honey, 
You know that motel on the old highway where those people got shot and they were making meth? It's under new management. We should check it out. You know what that sign should say? Still a dump. <laughs> you know what sign I saw in my neighborhood? A handmade sign in a guy's front yard. It said garage cell. Cell, S-E-L-L, -L, garage cell. What kind of hillbilly meth head? misspells the word sale. That word's everywhere. On sale, for sale, back to school sale, sale, S-A-I-L. It's nice to work in front of smart people, it really is. There are places this country, they stare at me on that one. You spelled that all right. See this, the West Virginia State Legislature passed their roadkill bill, making it easier for the citizens of West Virginia to possess and eat their roadkill. Hey, honey, I'm leaving work. You want me to hit something? <laughs> what a great DUI defense that is. Yeah, I pulled you over, swallow back there. You been drinking? I was hunting. Good luck. I have a website, it's bradupton.com. No reason I tell you, I don't feel the need to put the www in there. Do we need to hear that on websites? www, they're all www. What's that short for, by the way? Worldwide web. Right, World Wide Web has three syllables. www has nine. <laughs> it's not short for anything. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> Some of you guys are looking at me like the Taliban watching baseball. <laughs> the NCAA said that all colleges with an Indian mascot had to get rid of their Indian mascot because it was offensive to Indians. The NCAA is headquartered in Indianapolis, Indiana. <laughs> Slightly ironic. Did you guys watch the Olympics last summer? Of course you did. America did great in the Olympics. We had a great Olympic Games. That was great. You know, though, when you're watching the Olympic Games, you see the eight fastest men in the world, the eight fastest women in the world. I think we forget how fast they are. You know what I think they ought to do to keep it in perspective? Pull somebody out of the stands, give them a shot at the goal. Section 32, row six, seat nine, come on down. You're going for the goal. Some fat guy with a selfie stick. That is a 35 second 100 meters right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you know what else I'd like to see in the Olympics sometimes? Just some athlete snap and lose it. Just lose his cool, like a diver. He's in sixth. It's his last jump. He knows he can't medal. He walks out there and goes, you know what, I trained half my life for this. I'm not gonna get anything. Because <laughs> the next day, no one would know who won that competition. Everybody in the world would know that guy's name. He'd be doing endorsements for the rest of his life. Do you know from 1900 to 1920, tug of war was an Olympic sport? Tug of war, I wish they'd bring that back. I'd like to see some big Russian steroid monsters against like the strongest guys from Somalia. <laughs> Vlad, Sasha, check these guys. <laughs> see the arms come off? I believe we won. <laughs> Who's next? Mexico. <laughs> the Mexican team. Tug of war. I thought you said taco war. <laughs> it's no bueno. 2010, I was in Vancouver. I got some tickets uh, for the Olympic Games and I got to see Luge and they were interviewing this guy, this Luge legend, 38 years old, been in four Olympics, gonna retire after the Olympics from Luge. I thought, how do you retire from that sport? It's laying down. It's not like you're gonna lose a step, it's laying down. Laying down is the only skill you get better at every year you're alive. And eventually you master it. You can send a corpse down the hill and get a great time. The stiffer the better, like, oh, Grandpa's going for it, look at him.
Then I'd take us to go see biathlon. You know what that is, cross-country skiing and target shooting. How do you put those two oddball events together and come up with a sport? Hey, I know, let's run the 110 meter high hurdles and change the brakes on a 79 Plymouth Fury. I'm the world's best. I interviewed the American, he was ranked 20th in the world, and they asked him, what are your chances? And I thought, you know what? You're skiing through the woods with a rifle. Pretty good. <laughs> I'm coming out of the woods in first place under those circumstances. <laughs> I'm low on ammo, but I'm in the lead. Did you guys follow me on that one? I, I shot everybody. You don't need to stop in this country, any kind of restaurant, going to like an Applebee's, one of those chains, <laughs> this is so annoying, where the staff sings happy birthday to somebody. Yeah, look at your nod. Why do we do it? Everybody involved hates it. Staff hates it, diners hate it, birthday boy hates it. You know who likes it? Birthday boy's friend. Yeah, that's the one idiot enjoying that moment right there. They're like the arsonist at the fire, like, <laughs> I caused this. <laughs> Speaking of birthdays, I was in a Hallmark store that day looking at birthday cards. Have you seen this? Hallmark has a line of birthday cards now for people turning 100. How many of those do you think they sell in a week? Those cannot be flying off the shelf. And if you have to buy a card for somebody's turn 100, put that off at the last minute. It's okay to laugh at that. It's not like they're here. They're at the casino. <laughs> this happened in Seattle a few months ago. A guy got killed on the interstate. He was driving the wrong way down the interstate. And the police spokesman was quoted as saying, we don't know how fast he was traveling, but the posted speed limit on that section of the highway is 60 miles an hour. <laughs> if you're driving the wrong way down the interstate, all the speed limit signs are silver. <laughs> I don't think speed's your biggest worry at that point. <laughs> Hope I don't get a ticket. I was slipping through the channels the other night and I came across a senior golf tournament. I thought, who's watching seniors play golf? Who has that kind of time in your life? You know what I would watch though? Senior cage fighting. I don't think I could sleep if I thought that was on. A couple of 20 year olds in the cage, they're gonna fight again in a month. A couple of 80 year olds in there, that's a death match. Tap out, crap out, nap out. That's how that's going. You ever see these kind of stories? I mean, somebody gets killed, kind of tragic circumstances. Maybe they were rock climbing, fishing, skydiving, and they get killed. And people always say this, I know they mean well. They go, at least he died doing something he loved. Which to me is the cruelest irony of all time. Because if I told you I was gonna teach you how to fish, you're gonna love fishing. You're gonna fish almost every weekend for the next 30 years. But eventually, you're gonna fall off a boat and drown. You'd go, well, you know what? I think I wanna learn how to draw. You wanna be happy for somebody? Hope they die doing something they hated. Then they didn't have to finish. I wanna die on Thanksgiving weekend at my in-laws house. Maybe I can ruin that weekend for them one time. <laughs> you ever hear I died under those circumstances? I want you to be happy for me. Ah, that's great, he hated doing that. <laughs> I got invited to a 70s theme party recently. I went to the Goodwill store to look for ugly plaid jacket and I found it. And as I got to the cash register, I discovered that Goodwill sells gift cards. <laughs> Let me repeat that one more time. <laughs> Goodwill sells gift cards. When is it ever appropriate to give or to receive a Goodwill gift card? <laughs> hey, I'm spending some money. Why don't you buy yourself something? Nothing new, of course. I'm guessing there's a used crock pot or a t-shirt worn by a stranger in here with your name on. <laughs> if you ever have a card and a Goodwill gift card drops out of there, might want to rethink the relationship. <laughs> Look, honey, dinner for two at the food bank. <laughs> the Goodwill store by my house last June said 50% off Father's Day sale. Nothing says I love you pops. Quite like, hey dad, jump in the car. We don't want to pay full price for the used stuff. 
if my kids ever take me to Goodwill on Father's Day, you know what I want for Father's Day? I want some new kids. I'm supposed to go to the Home Depot this weekend. I am not looking forward to that. I don't like going into the Home Depot. You know what? Why have 12 checkout stands if you're never gonna open them all at once? You ever seen them all open at once? No. What set of circumstances has to occur? Hey, I got an idea. How about Sunday afternoon? There's 40 of us in this line. Now they make you scan your own things in there. You know what I do? This is brilliant. The machine gives you the option of Spanish or English, right? There's always somebody watching the self-serve machines. I just hit Spanish and go, hey, could you do this for me? <laughs> they come over every time. They do it for you. They look at you like an idiot. It doesn't matter. You know why? You're not the one wearing the orange vest. <laughs> Guy got all finished. I said, gracias. Me gusta el chalaco. I did a show a couple years ago in August in Phoenix, Arizona. You ever been to Phoenix in August? Oh, oh yeah, it's nice. About 180 every day. What well, do locals always tell me about the heat? Dry heat, yeah. You know what? So's fire. One time walking by the bank, you know the sign that flashes back and forth between the time and the temperature? At 109 in the afternoon, the time and the temperature was exactly the same. That sign's going, 109. 109. 109. I'm like, oh, better not be like that at 430. But if you've never been there, it's so dry. You get chap lips, you get nosebleeds. They always talk about how many old people live in Phoenix. I don't think they're old. I think they're dried out. <laughs> they're in their 20s. They just need a glass of water. <laughs> they could get one if they had a debit card. <laughs> I will tell you a little bit about myself. I am recently a widower. If Everything went as planned. <laughs> These are jokes, folks. Relax. It's a comedy show. It's not true. My wife and I have been together 37 years. Thank you very much. That's pretty good, huh? Yeah. Married 30, been together 37 years. We have a 22-year-old son, a 20-year-old daughter. They both drive, of course. You know what that means? As soon as they get in the car, they take over the radio station. I have to listen to the worst music I've ever heard in my life. You know what? I figured out how to get a change of station. Sing along. <laughs> Honey got a booty like pow, pow, pow. <laughs> Dad, stop it. Call me Mr. Flintstone, because I can make you bad rock. Stop it. Why are you doing that? I blame it on the alka, alka, alcohol. <laughs> My son says, you sound stupid. I said, I got one less problem without you. <laughs> he says, why are you poking me? I go, can't keep my hands to myself. <laughs> I love it when in the kitchen, my two kids, my wife walks in, I go, honey, got a booty like pow, pow, pow. <laughs> and you know what? That's her cue to give me one of those things right there. <laughs> Let me tell you something. We don't see the kids for a couple of days. <laughs> I highly recommend it. Honey got a booty like pow, pow, pow. What kind of lyric is that? <laughs> they don't write them like they used to. I know that George Harrison wrote the most beautiful Beatles songs of all time. Something in the way she moves attracts me like no other lover. That's a beautiful lyric. You know what he's trying to say? Honey got a booty like pow, pow, pow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mess with my kids a little. I had to take those car seats out of the back. Ever do that as a parent? Take the car seats out of the back and then clean up the crack of the seat? It's disgusting. Full of broken cookies, raisins, M&Ms, pretzels. I think that's how they invented trail mix. I will guarantee you that's how that product originated. 
It wasn't a hiker that came up with trail mix. It was a parent somewhere that climbed in the back seat of the minivan and scooped that up and went, you know what, if you took that fuzz and that Band-Aid out of there. I would eat that. I can't imagine what it'd be like to be single again. Go out to a nightclub and say something to a woman to impress her. I haven't done that in 37 years. I have no idea what I would say to a female anymore. I really don't. You know what I do now? I bet I would walk up to a woman and go, hey, you know what? I vacuumed the whole house today. <laughs> Did a couple loads of wash, folded it, put it away. <laughs> Some of you ladies are liking this, aren't you? And a whole pile of laundry, I'm gonna iron every piece of that. Then <laughs> I'd like to unload your dishwasher. <laughs> the women are going, oh my word. <laughs> You've been married a long time. Your wife would give you a list of things to do around the house. Am I right, fellas? A honey-do list. Honey, do this, honey, do that. Can you imagine ever walking up to your wife, handing her a list and going, here, get these things done. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know how that works out for you. Not in a million years would it ever occur to any one of us to try and pull that one off. <laughs> I said to my wife, you give me a list of things to do if I give you a list of things to quit doing. How about that? How about a honey don't list? Perfectly fair. You know what I want to list is, ladies? Don't put so many pillows on the bed. Gee, how many pillows do we need on a bed? Two heads, two pillows, that's all we need on there. I'll bet every bed here's got eight or 10 pillows. Am I right, fellas? Yeah. What do you do when you go to bed, guys? You grab three of them, you throw them right on the floor. You gotta lay down somewhere. If you put your head on pillow number three, your feet are foot and a half off the end of the bed. Just grab them and throw them on the floor. And ladies, if you put a new bedspread on or new pillowcases we don't notice, don't get upset. You know why? We don't care. We don't care. My wife said, didn't you notice we had new pillowcases? <laughs> Here's something every couple has in common. I don't care if you've been together five weeks or 50 years, you have your side of the bed you sleep on and under no circumstances will it ever change. <laughs> Can you imagine going to bed some night, your spouse went to bed an hour before he did, you walk in there, she's asleep on your side of the bed? Would you look at her and go, oh, how sweet. The love of my life fell asleep on my side of the bed. I don't wake her up, I'll sleep on her side of the bed. No, you pull up the sheets, you go, move over. It's not like you wanna sleep on her side of the bed. You ever seen her nightstand, some of the things sitting over there? How about that file they use in their feet? You ever seen that thing? Are you starting a fire? You just scared the cat. I'm taking the calluses off my heel. Well, do that outside. Ugh, I'll get the shop vac now. Should I grab the sand while I'm out there? God, I think I married Wilma Flintstone. When your kids are little, he keeps syrup of Epicac in the house. You know what that is? It makes you vomit. It makes you throw up. If they swallow poison, you give it to them. I bought it when my kids were little. I was reading the box. It has an expiration date on it. How bad can that go? It makes you puke. Hey, don't swallow that. That's old. That's gone bad. That'll make you sick right there. You need to buy some new fresh syrup of Epicac. Hey, kids, come here. We need to finish this up. Where are you guys? Come here. Told you I was in Phoenix. Do they have in Phoenix? I'm not making this up. You know what they have in Phoenix? Tanning salons. Yes, they do. You know what? I've been to Alaska. I couldn't buy a snow cone. Just goes to prove people buy things they don't need. I'm convinced of that. Have you seen those ads on TV for that Miracle Ear? If you can hear all the words but can't understand them, you need Miracle Ear. If I can hear all the words but can't understand them, I might be in Mexico. Do you know in Seattle, the last three years, we've had five major windstorms. All five of those major windstorms, every one of them been on a Thursday. You know how I know that? It's my garbage day. <laughs> it's 
spent every one of those windstorms looking for my garbage can. Never found it either, but at least now I got a nicer one. <laughs> Anybody else do the windstorm upgrade? Like, oh man, this one's nicer than mine. I'm grabbing this one. <laughs> we had a huge windstorm several years ago, right before Christmas. Everybody lost power five to eight days. It's cute when you lose the power, isn't it? For 20 minutes. For 20 minutes, it's kind of a novelty. You're like, I keep turning on that light. <laughs> it's fun for a few minutes. Day five, it's lost its charm. <laughs> You're burning toys and furniture at that point. <laughs> Let go of that. You don't play with that anymore. But after that storm, in the Seattle region, 13 people died, 100 people were hospitalized for barbecuing in the house. You know what? Sometimes we just need to thin the herd. I read those things in paper, I go, that is so tragic. But after that storm, the Washington State Legislature held an emergency session specifically to pass a law. Now in the state of Washington, all barbecues have to have a sign on them telling you not to barbecue in the house. Do we really need to be told not to barbecue in the house? Here's one for you. Don't put bacon in your pants and tease a pit bull either. There's certain things in life we don't need to be told. And if you're thinking about barbecue in the house, I'm pretty sure you're not a reader. And we follow that windstorm up with some snow. You want some good comedy. I want you to come to Seattle. We get a half an inch of snow. You'll see the dumbest population you've ever seen in your life. People just parking their car on a bridge, walking home. That's it, I'm leaving it. I, don't think. I was in downtown Seattle. I saw on Fifth Avenue, a front wheel drive, Honda Civic tire chains on the rear wheels. I wish I was making that up. I just want to go over there, open up that door, reach in and go, you are so ignorant, I can't believe. Is that a barbecue in your back seat? You better not smell bacon. Ladies, admit this too, you're walking around in the snow and ice with your husband or boyfriend, holding her the arms, she won't slip, but basically your attitude is, if I'm going down, this idiot's going with me right here. Yeah, I figured that one out right away. Let go, let go, let go! It's slick out here, jeez. <laughs> Did you guys see this? McDonald's announced they will no longer be using styrofoam. They'll be using cardboard. I'm thinking sooner or later, they're gonna have to use meat. <laughs> wow, apparently McDonald's fans in here, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been at my yard, working on my yard. I got these bald spots in the front yard. I don't know what caused it. They seem to be getting bigger. I've tried everything to make grass grow, nothing works. So I'm gonna do, right next to the bald spot, I'm gonna grow the grass really long. <laughs> Rank it over the top, baby. <laughs> gonna make my yard great again. I did a show in Billings, Montana. Woohoo! It's a nice town. It's the only town in America that considers chewy tobacco a vegetable. <laughs> Audience is like a sea of John Deere hats and styrofoam cups. <laughs> and it was ladies' night. Ugh. I was in Portland, Oregon last summer. This is a newspaper while I was in Portland. The Sheriff's Department had pulled a headless body out of the Willamette River. It said right in the article, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Department has not yet determined the cause of death. <laughs> He's got no head. I just pictured all these cops and I go, what do you suppose killed him? Think he drowned? But that water ran right down his neck. But the article went on to say they had not yet ruled out suicide. I mentioned there was no head. I mentioned that, right? How do you chop off your own head? That's what I'm going, oh, gee, this hurts. Woo! What kind of plan was this? How do you chop off your own head? That's what I want to turn on the bandsaw, run down the hall. I nicked it, God, jeez. <laughs> Honey, we go to the emergency room. <laughs> it's 
Let's try that new place in Spanish for you. <laughs> How do you chop off your head, hide your head, go jump in a river? Oh, finally, I got my head off. Gee, that's a lot of work. All right, I gotta, I gotta hide this darn thing now. Okay. There's a good spot. They'll never find that. I'm gonna go jump in a river. Where's the river? About six weeks ago, I was in the San Francisco airport. In the San Francisco airport, I saw a dwarf wearing a giant's jacket. I gotta be honest with you, I couldn't stop laughing. I was looking around going, does anyone else not see how funny that is? I work on about six or eight cruise ships a year. I was up in Juneau, Alaska. It's beautiful if you've never been there. It's right on the water and these big, beautiful mountains come up directly behind the city. And early in the cruise season, they still have snow on them. The locals told me the number one asked question by these tourists, they get off the ship and look around is, oh, what's the elevation here? <laughs> you just got off a boat. <laughs> you remember going uphill? <laughs> that is so sad. I just grabbed by the head and dipped in that salt water. That is salt water, see? <laughs> salt water, see? See? Sea level. <laughs> First time I flew to Alaska, like 25 years ago, I flew from Seattle to Anchorage. I had this bonehead sitting next to me. He's talking to me. He goes, you ever been to Hawaii? Goes, I've been there a couple of times. He goes, I've never been to Hawaii. In fact, we land in Anchorage. I'll be the closest I've ever been to Hawaii. What makes you think we can fly three and a half hours north of Seattle, be closer to the wire? We're looking at a map. But I think the problem is every map in the United States you've ever seen, it's the lower 48, right in the corner, Hawaii and Alaska. <laughs> it took you a minute, but you got it, and I appreciate it. I tore my hamstring a couple years ago. I tore it really bad, and I know you don't care. And basically, what I did was aggravate an old high school fishing injury. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing if you're listening. But I was getting over that. I was thinking about that. Terran muscles is unique to humans, isn't it? You never seen your cat jump out of a dead sleep, run down the hall. <laughs> it's true. You ever seen a bird take off and pull a wing? Oh, oh, geez, oh. I'm going to be walking for weeks. Uh, these big web feet, they're no good. You know, it really suck if you're a snake and you threw your back out. <laughs> well, I see a dog just one time walk up to something and go, oh. <laughs> old high school frisbee injury. <laughs> we have a cat at home. Who's got a cat at home? Cat owners? Cat owners? Yeah. You ever step in cat puke barefoot at about 3.30 in the morning? No, oh, more cat owners now. That's nice, isn't it? Stumbling into the bathroom at 3.30 in the morning, half dead to the world. Like, oh, God, gee. Stupid cat. Oh, that was still warm. <laughs> Here's some for the cat owners. You ever wake up to this at 3.30 in the morning? <laughs> Jump out of bed in the dark, naked with no glasses on. All I'm trying to do is find the cat so you can throw him on the tile. Not on the carpet, not on the carpet. Where is he, where is he? Not on the carpet, not on the carpet. <laughs> All you do is you grab the cat is give him the Heimlich maneuver. You're walking back to bed. I think I got him in time. Oh, jeez, stop. Hey, good thing these pillows are down here. <laughs> Listen, you guys are wonderful. Thank you very much. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Thank you so much.